Alright you guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Salman, welcome to the video today. Uh, today I'm just going to take you guys through how to, um, how to turn your queries, how to basically, um, <coughs> you know, um, do some, um, some index, like, uh, index, uh, setup, uh, for your queries. I'm also going to, um, show you guys how to, um, with Oco you have this <coughs> component called the optimizer. <coughs> and basically, what it what it's in charge of, uh, it's responsible for um, retrieving your the, the, the queries that you are that you're requesting uh, to your statements. And basically, you know, I'm gonna show you how to how you can um, actually just tell the optimizers how to go about doing this job, and uh, and and therefore improve your performance. I'm also gonna show you guys how to um, how to use the explain plan. And more specifically, I'm going to show you how to um, basically, uh, you know, focus more on um, like understanding exactly how, how, um, like you know, how the optimizer again goes about, you know, uh, utilizing the explain, the explain plan, you know, to form to um, to get to get you to provide data sets. I'm also going to show you guys how to use uh, how to apply hints. And the last thing I'll show you guys is basically how to um, what I'm, I'm going to go over what what the outlines are, outlines are, and um, basically and what they have to do with execution plans. <coughs> First thing I'll show you guys is uh basically this is the syntax for uh, creating an index. So basically what you be doing is you you just a, a typical create. Uh, here you have a um, you have unique. You can either put in unique or you can put in bitmap. And you put an index, you put an index name, and you put on which table you're creating um, that uh, index. But more specifically, you're actually going to put in uh, the, the uh, column that you're going to put an index on. You can have either you can either have a, a single a, 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 a single column for your index, or you can have a, com a uh, two columns, which would make it a compound index. Uh, again, the name for a multiple multiple column index is a compound index. So unique, unix in unique. Uh, when you put in unique, basically it's a subset of what's known as a B-tree index. Uh, I'm gonna go over what B-tree and what bitmap are. These are two different uh, indexes, and basically they have, um, they are, they are, they can, they can, they have the, they have different uses inside of, inside of, um, you know, different uses inside of local software. Um, and then in terms of uh, these are just some additional, um, some optional parameters that you can that you can uh, put in. You have no logging. Basically, this is what's, what's just what just gonna do is gonna it's gonna basically it's just telling the um index. Yeah, it's like it's telling the um the the focus software that the index is not gonna generate uh, any video log information. I mean that's good. Uh, if you know because you're not, you know you know there's there's no writing um to the video log. But then again, uh again you you you're not you have any resources. But the downside is um. Uh, if you experience a uh, a system failure, then you would have to rebuild your index. Uh, so you have to you just weigh those two options, um, you know, uh, with this parameter. And the next parameter that you can optionally set is the uh, compress. Um, basically, what this does is it actually just uh, <coughs> gets rid of um of, of um duplicative um values. Um, so basically, let's say you have you have a table where you have a compound index. And someone, the person's name is Mary Johnson, for example. Uh, what you can do is you can do a compress, um, and then let's say you know um, that Mary Johnson user is is created again. Uh, basically, what this would uh, um, ensure is that basically you would you would not have two um, two of the same um, column values. So you would not have two Mary Johnson. It would just be one. So, you know, basically what you're doing is you just, again, you're just getting rid of, um, of, uh, of, um, you know, of the values that are, you know, that, uh, that are, you know, that are, that are similar as the original, that, that are the same as the original one, as the original values. And then next parameter that, that should be setting is the reverse parameter. Uh, basically what this does is actually, what it does, it just balances out the, the tree structure, so, and it's especially when it comes to a number and date column, so. Um, uh, the perfect example is uh, if you have a um, if you have uh, if you if you if you're doing a um, let's say for example if you're doing a sequence right and you have a sequence inside you know 
basically going from one, <coughs> one, two, three, four, and then go all the way up to one, one thousand, and you know, and above, you know, go, go, going to whichever value. So the reverse actually ensures that you know, in terms of the index, you will not have any um, um, the the um the there won't there won't be any sort of any sort of um you know relying on or utilize utilizing more of one particular branch in your tree structure. I'm gonna go over what it, what an industry structure is in a little bit. But basically, you know, you just ensure that that, that those values are evenly distributed distributed inside inside the uh, industry structure. Uh, when you do that, basically, you know, you you allow for um, you know, it's more it's it's, it's <coughs> you allow for more clarity, um, you know, for your for your index, and basically, it's just more it's just more readable, and um, you know, you know, um, to you know to the to the local software. <coughs> and then the next parameter that you be setting is the parallel parameter. Uh, this is the number of processes that you that you are uh, that you that, that you're gonna have uh, running. Again, parallel refers to the concept of parallel parallelism. And basically, you have par parallel processes doing this, you know, uh, um, from the same task. Um, so uh, basically, here you if you put it parallel, then you would you would, you would have um, this you would have parallel processes uh, creating an index. And actually, the the actually another recommendation is that uh, whatever number of CPUs that you have on your system, what you should do, you should do uh, total CPUs minus one to get uh, this value for the number of processes. So if I have uh, four CPUs on my system, then it would just be four minus one, and I will I will, I will put this setting to three. Uh, that would be a level of parallelism uh, that would go into um, uh, into creating my index. And then the last parameter is uh, compute statistics. Uh, this is actually very useful uh, uh, because uh, basically uh, the only reason you can, the only way you can um, optimally, um, uh, you know, set up uh, your environment uh, for high performance is if you are able to get statistics. <coughs> okay. In terms of database indexes, I'm gonna I'm first gonna cover B tree indexes. So again, in terms of uh, so here. If you if you put in create index index name, it's assumed that you actually is basically the, that's the that's the uh, default way of um, of creating a, a B tree index. Uh, a unique is unique is also a uh, is also a um, a subset of uh, of the B tree. And again, one I I don't think I mentioned this, but basically what unique says is is basically you didn't shoot a, a unique values um, for. Um, you know that that are, you know you value for um, uh, which that whatever uh, columns or data or data that's on inside of uh, is on the index. <coughs> so basically, uh, back to what I was saying, the BT index. Uh, basically, what it does is it works. It works best on high cardinality columns. By cardinality columns, I'm, by high cardinality, I mean basically if you have, <coughs> let's say, you know, let's say you have a column name gender. And you have a uh, male and female. That's the low cardinality. Basically, it's the it's the cardinality that you use to the distinct values can be that can um that can be part of uh of that um that can be that can be that can be you know within the data set. So again, the distinct value the distinct values. Um, so high cardinality would, would be you would have you would have you know multiple uh, data sets that can be that can be used uh, you know as as a value for that column. So, for example, would be you know if you have some if you have a um a name a name column that would be more that would be uh, that would definitely be a high cardinality column. Basically, if you look at this example I have, uh, what you have here is you know you just have uh you have last you have first names, and again the the um you know this is high cardinality because you have you know you have R's you have P you have N. Um, this is this is this is where you will use the B tree index. And what a BT index actually does is it actually it, it reorganizes your um it reorders it organizes and reorders your um your variety data. So basically, if you look at what I have here at the bottom, so um, these are individual varieties. So when you create an, a BT index, what's going to happen is that uh, the index is going to this is going this this is going to happen internally for in, inside. In, this is what's going to happen internally. You're going to have a branch block. You have a leaf. You have a leaf. A leaf block. The um and let's say you create a uh, you created an, an index on a name column, 
you know, and because I already have names here at the bottom. So what would happen is that uh, the names are actually going to be parsed out uh, alphabetically. So you would have starting with B, you know, all the way to um, you know the last alphabetical um, name, you know, inside inside the, the name column. So you 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 would have uh, basically you know here you have Paul and here at the bottom you have you have Raul. So basically that's just that's what the uh, index does. It parses out uh, alphabetically. Um, the um, you know the the information um, the the value the value sets that are in the values that are in the data sets. So basically, it's more it's better it's more readable, you know, and and, and easier to access. And um, again, as I've already told you guys already, the kind is a range in distant column values. <coughs> um, basically, you know, and uh, this is <coughs> this is very really good. Um, you know, this is a, this is a very really configuration um, overall because you know you just you, you you sort of you know everything is being there's separation and you know everything is being um, <coughs> you know it's more readable the drawback is that <coughs> if you have a, if you have multiple insert and and update operations being used this is a lot of work you know for uh, you know that's taking place so you have these individual IDs so let's say you're um, you're performing an insert, <coughs> or you know, let's say you're updating, you know, multiple names here. Uh, what will happen is that you know um, this will be longer. The reason why is uh, basically you essentially have all these values in your ready, and they're already tapped, tossed out. That will be you be doing this. You be going through. You be updating each individual already, um, and you know. It, that would take a really long time, you know, in terms of you know making making updates and uh, and also performing um, uh, insert operations. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you, in terms of the Oracle software, you and 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 index you you have either B tree index or you have uh, the other the other option which is Bitmap index. This is <coughs> this is you know again this is more this is applicable, this is more applicable for. You know when you have you know more distinct values, um, so you most so you likely find yourself most of the time using this as opposed to using a bitman index where you have look on I you know going back to example I, I gave you with the male and the female for gender, that would be an example of a, a bitmap index. And also the draw the, the drawback with uh, the downside with um, uh, the bitmap the bit the B tree index is that it doesn't store <coughs> you know values. Um, so basically, there's no, there's no null here. It's all, it, they all have to have actual values. Um, and as I've already told you guys, already, it's just, it's just the, it's how, it's basically what makes um, the data set unique. Each value has a, has a body uh, inside of the OCO block. And, and also in terms of, uh, remember I mentioned, I, I told, I told you guys earlier that you can. When you have two columns, you can actually use what you can actually, actually refer referred to as uh, compound uh, indexes. So you can uh, you can use a comp you can use multiple columns on a B tree index. Uh, you can basically what I'm saying is that this, this can be used as a compound index. Um, and again, this is just an example of of a um, you know. Of a uh, uh, of um of basically how 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 the index uh will, will work again uh you you the only thing you you're able to index uh, this is something I should have uh, mentioned earlier is because you have a word clause so basically you're specifying which data to be which data set should be looked at uh yeah but don't but yeah but don't this you just um you making you know you um, this is again. It's, you, you're making it clear that uh, this is the particular data set you're looking for. And in terms of database indexes, uh, <coughs> database indexing. I mean, the next uh, type of uh, index you have is a bitmap. It's actually it's actually not bit bitmap map, but it's bitmap with a p at the end. Uh, you have bitmap indexes. Uh, they do store null values. And if you look at this diagram that I have, <coughs> what you have here basically is you have a variety. Okay, zero, zero to eight. That's fine. Uh, you have the base data. 
what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be um, again going back to the, car, the uh, you know the gender example, like with a male and female. It's gonna be so. This is a base data, right? So this is where the end is the base data. So again, you know, I have two, three, you know, one zero here. Um, but really, my the point that I'm trying to make is that if you have, if in the base you have male and female, so you know, if you have male here, uh, you know, one for male and zero for no. Okay, if you have, if you have male. Um, zero for false and um, and one for true. And basically, what would happen is that <coughs> there'll be a matching uh, on the index side. So, uh, basically, uh, did my index actually just match up, ma match um, these values with uh, with the with the base data set? So basically, it's gonna look for a case if you have, for example, if for this one, let's say we to use B or it match the B or against the um and then against the, the X data set. So none of these match, as you guys can see. But here you have these one, these one matches. So well. you know this would be, you know, this would be some less retrieval, and these two match. So what you do, what you're just doing is you're matching the base data in zeros and ones um, to the um, to basically, you know, that's the bitmap index is just going to be, you know, when, whenever there is a match, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna um, basically just, you know, grab that information and then, and then, um, and then bring. And then retrieve for the user. <coughs> so again, uh, basically it's base data um, comparison with bitmap index data. <coughs> and if there's a match, again in zeros and one zero being for false and one for true, then basically you'll be able to reach uh, the 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 the, um, the index is going to be the the optimizer is going to be able to retrieve that data. Um, and again, <coughs> this is. Everything is being done um, through the variety. So <coughs> this is what optimizes is looking for the variety. So uh, and yeah. So basically, it's just going to be matching. And again, uh, the bit, the B, the bit bitmap index should be used in um, in uh, low cardinal columns as I already told you. And then also it stores. No values by by no values I mean of course um there's no value inside um you know inside of the data set so um <coughs> actually this is not much this is not a, this is not a bad example but like now will be there's nothing um values will be zeros and ones so uh, this one stores no no values but the B tree index do not store no, no values. And basically, this is um. I'm gonna focus now on uh, on uh, on basically how to improve your optimizer. So, what is the optimizer? I've already just gone over uh, with you guys. The optimizer is basically um is what's what retrieves the variety, um and then you know, and basically that's that's what that's what's able to um basically respond to the query that you're writing. So, um. <coughs> And basically, what it does is uh, it's responsible for figuring out which ex execution plan to use uh, for your statements. In terms of how the different the different modes for the optimizer, um, basically, the optimizer can either be rule rule based or it can be cost based. Uh, rule based uh, has been around for a long period of time, um, and it's actually it's been uh, it's been them. Uh, then uh, not not uh, I want to say it's too complex for you know for for uh, for uh, you know regular use. By too complex, I mean it's, it's it has rules that uh, basically that are that are not not that are not clear and not you know not easy to understand. So basically, if you set up if you set if you set your uh, optimizer to rule based, then you you're not sure what what kind of rules will be you'll be uh, it'll be you know, doing the retrieving, um, what 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 rules it be used uh, utilizing to do the perform the retrieving? Uh, so basically, it's, what I'm saying is that it's recommended that you use a code ba a cost based um, uh, mode for your optimizer. And again, um, uh, in terms of cost based, uh, basically you would have you have to have you have you have um, you know these two options. You have um, you know you have first those and you have all those. Uh, first rule will be uh, a, a more, more you know a better for OTT environment because they're fast. First rule will be 
um, you know, retrieve these first rows, you know, the top 10, top, you know, whichever number of rows you need. And then, you know, again, that's if you have a lot of transactions taking place inside of, um, inside of Opus, you know, inside of Opus Alpha. And then, uh, if you have more of an OLP environment, uh, which is this, which is you know more slow, which is slow, basically you can use uh, all rows. Where basically it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna not gonna pick up the first. It's gonna do more of the, do more of the reading and analyzing before you, before you know it performs before you achieve you achieve the um the data the, the data it the the variety um you know um contain the data sets um so. And then also the cost. Uh, another thing is that cost bits is actually derived from the statistics that you get. So basically, again, you know, if you're going, to, if you're going, if you're retrieving first rows and all the rows, then you need to uh, basically just get a sense of, you know, uh, what's in those, uh, what's in those rows, what that is in those rows, and that's more information that you be, that you that you be uh, that will be part of the cost base mode. Um, uh, that, that that would be including in the in the in the, in the mode the cost based mode for optimizes number of rows and and the length of bytes. And in terms of the parameters, um, so the optimizer mode is actually is is actually just that you know that's that's how you refer to uh, to it in the inside the Oracle software. So if you want to change the um, parameter the uh, optimizer mode, you would just issue an alter system separate optimizer optimizer mode. Uh, to the mode. Actually, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna just do I'm gonna do that just now. I have my uh, Oracle Twelve C open. SQL Plus. Uh, what I do is I'm just I'm just gonna show parameter uh, optimizer underscore mode. So basically, here I have my con my current configuration is for all rows. Uh, I already I already changed my uh, my configuration for 11G to first rows. So what I'll do is here. Uh, is again this is only for demonstration. So what I'll do is I'll issue the statement out of session. Set optimizer underscore mode is equal to uh, first underscore rows. Session has been altered. So let's try that. Same statement again. First row now. So basically, I just I just change um, the optimizer directives, and I've and I've told it. I've, I've just I've just uh, instructed it to, hey, as opposed to all rows, look for the first rows that you find, and that's my information. That's the that's the data that I'll be uh, that I'll, that I that that I you know that's the that's the method that I want you to use. Um. Again, you can either set set it, you know, for a session. Or you can set it for, you know, um, you know, um, for your for your actual for the overall system, make it permanent. And then, also, um, this is a very neat trick. Um, you can also just this is this is just a uh, I'm 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 basically leading into the uh into how to use first files, into how to use our hints. This is what a hint is. A hint is a forward slash star plus and then you put in what the what the hint is and you put in the and then you, you enclose it with another um, star forward slash basically it's gonna say it's, you know and you and you put it you put this before inside the query before the column name so if you have um so let's say you have you have this um you know select column one column two from all users what you do you put in you put in right here you put in the forward slash star and you put in first rows or all rows, whichever um, whichever um, whichever ones you want to use, and then you be able to uh, basically just just tell hint, hint uh, give a hint to the optimizer as to um, what uh, data set she she should retrieve. And then last, um, in terms of uh, again, in terms of the optimizer, what you, again just going back to what I uh, one of the, one of the parameters that I want, that I talked about earlier, which is the computer statistics. Um. Basically, what you can do is you can actually just query. You can query the, uh, the statistics. You can actually analyze one one the, the last time when a um what you can query the last time when a um when a table was analyzed. By that I mean, um. So let me do this. 
again, again, so, yeah, let me do this, first thing I'll do is, I need to get a sense of what the, what the, um, what the structure, of, the structure is for you stable, so, so let me describe, <coughs> dba underscore tables, so if you look at, if I, if I go over the, over the structure of this, uh, this, um, this uh, table, then basically I'll find what's uh, I'll find the um the last analog uh, analyzed column. So basically it's the it's basically the last it's just telling me the last time that the um that the statistics were compiled for this uh, table. So let me do this. Select table name um last underscore analyze from DBA underscore table. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I definitely shouldn't have done that. Okay, let me do this. I will probably just get Short number, small number of values um, from DBA underscore tables. Okay, never mind. Um, you can do this for a, uh, a table, you can do it for an index. Yeah, you, you, this is just, this is way too much information. And again, the bad thing, this, this bad thing is I'm connected as, uh, let me connect as HR and let me do this. So this should be easier with HR. I'm, I'm logging at this. That's why I'm getting so many, so many, um, so many rows. Uh, uh, hmm. Again, remember, so you can do this for any object. Select index underscore name. Class analyze from user underscore indexes. Basically, you get a sense of the last time the <coughs> this is six were compiled for um, the indexes. Um, and basically, if you look uh, again. Actually, you know, yeah, you can get, this is, uh, you know, this is just a reading of what's going on with your, with, with your object. You can do this for tables, you can do, it for, do this for uh, indexes or any, uh, um, other, or any other object. In terms of uh, optimizing your, uh, in terms of improving your optimized performance again, um, what you can also do is you can actually, uh, you, can get, you can actually gather statistics um like basically just on the on the fly uh with uh with the dbms stats package uh basically what you'd be doing is uh let me do this so i am going to i'm logging as hr right so let me connect i'm not sure if again just keep track of which user you are uh, because again you might not have as many privileges, you know, based on based on that. So <coughs> you should begin. EBMS underscore stats dot gather underscore schema underscore stats. Open command. Own name equal forward arrow. HR comma options equal whatever gather auto. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go over what what are uh, these um obviously this is just the it's just the username. I'm gonna go over what other auto means and a number of other um uh settings that I'm that I'm copying right now. Okay, comma. Got the auto. Okay. Estimate. 
and this core percent equals forward slash dbms underscore stats that auto that sample underscore size comma degree equals uh, let me just say I have let me just say two okay close command semicolon and semicolon forward slash options gather auto What is this thing? Option to do this. Okay. Oh man, I made a mistake. Um. Yeah, I've. I've this is a. Really. You know, you have to be uh, really vigilant. Vigilant. In setting, uh, in running on this specific, and with all these different plat, um, you know, uh, you know, lines of um, that you put that you're writing in. <coughs> what I should done here is is auto underscore sample size, and then not begin, but I'm looking for degree. There you go. Close command and one button. There you go. So my PL SQL uh, procedure has been has been successfully com completed. So basically, so now I have um now I have um you know I've just I've just got this statistic for uh you know for my um for the HR for the for the HR user. And again, so in terms of parameters, uh, basically, uh, <coughs> you have uh, very, uh, you know, for the owner name, you just have, you put an owner name and you put in the username uh, options. Uh, you can use gather auto. Uh, basically, what it's, what it's just saying is just, um, you, you know, you just have any statistics uh, at all costs. Uh, so you can, you know, <coughs> some, other, some other settings can actually, you can, you know, you could actually separate between stale never you can actually make a distinction between stale and, and never gathered um you know um, um um statistics but yeah just putting auto to just you know to get um you know uh, to gather this just regardless of of um of that of the uh state of that uh statistics um <coughs> and here uh this the next line is actually estimate uh, percent so what i'm doing is as opposed to gathering all of the uh, all the data sets and you know coming up with a statistic for all of them, what I've done is I've actually put in uh, it's actually putting auto sample size. But auto sample size is basically is, is like what it says. I'm I'm, I'm going to be sampling the um, I'm going to be doing the sampling of the database. You know based on you know a um, a, uh, a a um, a smaller uh, value set. So you know again that that percentage is actually five to twenty percent, not the entire data set. So I'll be, I'll be, um, I'll be able to gauge uh, from the five to twenty percent in gas statistics. You know what, what would be the, the performance if I was to, you know, uh, do some other uh, do some preparation based on this on that on, on uh, what I've what I've seen how, what I've seen inside of the um, inside of the uh, inside the sampling that I that I, that I use the, the sample size that I use. Um, the last parameter that you set is the degree. Again, this is just for the parallel processes. Again, the same the same uh, equation that you used earlier is uh, the total number of CPUs that you have in your system minus one. Um, so basically, that's how that's how much that's how many CPUs will be uh, that would be you know um, used for to be to gather the statistics. Um, let me do this. Okay, and then this is the, I'm gonna focus now on the explain plan. So basically, what this is is a um, the explain plan is basically uh, I have already, you know, 
pretty much, you know, I, I think I've, made, I've done a video on, on how to use on the what is explain plan is. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to. I think last time I, I did it, I showed you guys how to use X Ray Plan. It was it was with the SQL SQL developer, and I didn't go I didn't go into in that. I just showed you, you know, like some very basic, um, some very basic, um, 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 I just gave you guys some very basic information. Um, so now I'm actually going to, you know, like show you how to use it with the, um, with uh, SQL Plus. And so the first thing that I do is I'm actually going to execute a uh, SQL file, the UTL X Plan F SQL file. And it's actually it's again it's in the RDBMS uh, uh, ad uh, slash admin directory. So let me do this. I need to get to that. Did you get to that directory? Oh, you know what? <coughs> yeah, because I I should have just done this from the beginning. Copy. Thank you. Backslash UTLX plan. Can I open for the same reason? Okay, there you go. There you go. I'm back in. Again, I again what you have to do is you just have to log back, log on, log back in. Be able to uh, execute those uh, those SQL uh, those, those files SQL files again uh, on your on, on SQL Plus. Let me do this. Table being created and what's being created is is the plain underscore table um, that's being created. That's the table name. Uh, basically, it's going to store the explain plan information um, uh, for your for your queries. Um, and not another good thing to note is that with explain plan, basically, you know, you don't have to execute a query to, to, to view the explain plan. You can just use an explain plan for this for the uh, query, and you'll be able to see exactly what the optimizer will do just in case you were to execute that that uh, that's, uh, that statement. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to I already created my table. What I do now is I'm actually gonna issue uh, I'm gonna issue an explain plan um, statement. So let me do this. Explain plan for uh, select. Uh, I'm going to get some get some um, data sets from the HR user from HR underscore departments. There you go. It's been explained. So. Again, what happens? What happened here is that the explain plan was actually sent, was actually uh, packaged into the into the plan on score table. It was placed in, inside the plan on score table uh, table. So, <coughs> uh, what I do now is um, okay. Before I move, before I move forward, a uh, good thing is that another thing you can do is if you have multiple users who are trying to um, view how to um, you know you know the explain plan. Maybe what you can do is you can do an explain plan. Um, uh, uh, and then you can put this, uh, the, the, you know, this, um, this, this. Actually, it's not statement ID. Only is, is set statement ID to the username, and then you can, and then you put in the four hours. So it would be SMN plan. Um, four. I mean, at this point, plan set statement ID. That's the uh, and that's the user's HR. So you reset statement ID HR four, and then you put in the select. I mean, that's why if, if you have multiple. Is this for you know trying to execute the same plan? Um, and so what I'll do now is I'm gonna issue a select statement. Uh, again, uh, again I already have a plan table. Just, I'm just gonna I'm gonna query that that plan table right now. So I'm issue a select star from table dbms dot display. <coughs> no dbms underscore x plan again I'm working with a uh, with a database package here and so this is dbms underscore underscore x plan is the package and displays the um is the procedure so basically if you look at uh, what's going on here uh, basically I'm looking at um the, what the optimizer would do so in terms of what would be what would come what would be uh, what operation would come first the uh, one that's the most indented is the one that comes first um, in, in the execution plan. So basically, what would happen first is the is the uh, table, the full table scan. 
uh, for, for the department level and um and basically and that's how that's how the um that's how the um you know the the the, the data <coughs> that's how the optimizer will, will be able to basically just view uh which re re retrieve um you know the information that i'm pouring um and then what i actually do now is let me do this and t and how you can clear your uh your um your plan table is you can actually stem and de delete from from plan underscore table again i've told you i've already told you that you know the, that's the name of that of the of the plan plan table plan underscore table let me do this um i'm gonna issue this statement explain plan or select i'm gonna show you guys what what's, what goes on internally when you uh when you actually query uh for an, when you actually when you query involved in index for um hr that department where department underscore id is greater than or equals to one it's a best thing has been has been explained so let me do this select star from table open parent bbms underscore x plan package and then display which is a procedure close parent and execute it so if you look at what actually go on one internally you have because i actually included a word clause and there's an there's an index and the department id is the primary key for my database and therefore it has an index so basically that's what happened uh, that, that's that's the reason why the index came first before that before anything else uh, no that's what that's really why the index took place because when you have an if you have an index on a column what's going to happen is that um the optimizer is going to he's going to look for that index first and so if you look for the index and you found the db the db the department id um, primary key index and basically what it did is it just it, it then went forward and looked and looked at the row id um the, at, at, at the index variety uh, to be able to uh, to do the to do uh, to which you did did a set as opposed to uh, let's say having to perform a full table scan um for uh you know for the for the information so basically it's just how to use the uh, explain plan um and how to um uh, basically just um you know you know kind of get a sense of what our mother will do and also how to use the the plan and score table so let me do this one more one delete from plan underscore table so I've, I've gotten rid of the, the rows and also if you want to just if you want to just uh um look at the number of rows even before actually looking inside of the inside the table look at the number of rows uh that you know that that were that actually that 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 were part of the execution plan you can actually you can actually just go ahead select count star count star um plan underscore table again i just i've deleted my um the, the rows from from this uh from the table but basically if you know if, if i've done this before deleting it would be it would be crucial three so you can basically just you know um just know what uh, how many how many um lines of execution plans were um were written okay and this is a, uh, and this is another thing that um that I mentioned to you guys earlier. You can actually do this. You can um you can issue a select. You can actually you can actually um um apply hints to your select to your um to your statement. So um basically um you know first row is actually just it's trying to optimize it to find the very first row. Again, this is more as I've told you already. This is more for a fast based environment. Uh, and all typical environment where you have a lot of operations taking place. Um, so here, you know, perfect. You know, what it looks like looks like is this will be a select uh, forward slash star plus first underscore rows star forward slash, and then let's say you know I'm calling the department underscore name from uh hr underscore department 
you know, again, what you can do is you can, um, you know, you can just uh, give hints to the optimizer as to what it should do. You know, um, again, basically what you be doing, you know, if you if you really just be interested in hints, you should do uh, some research on uh, what hints uh, you can use because there are a number of them out there, um, and they have, um, you know, they they give you, you know. They have different um, uses, so uh, I'm not gonna cover it. Cover it uh, now. Um, it's you know again, it, it's very it's you know personally from what I've seen, it's it's very intense uh, using these hints. So definitely, if you want to if you want to commit yourself to this, it's gonna take some time to be able to uh, to learn them. Uh, basically, um, in terms of. Uh, in terms of statements, yeah. So basically, you can you can just you can do you can do so much with uh with with uh hints. You can you know either tell you can basically in terms of okay. Okay, this is okay. What what do uh hints apply to? You know, basically, it's, you know, apply to the uh they apply to the um the entire uh. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is I'm, I'm definitely not familiar with this, but um, basically, would, they would you know like like I did some research and this is what I put up. You know, yeah, you have different types of hints. You have you know you have core block hints. Um, basically, it means that they apply to entire SQL statement. You have um, you have a uh, you know uh single table. Um, yeah, it's it's, re it's really intense if you were if you were to go that route. Uh, single table is specified, you know, specified on table of view, or one table of view, multiple, multiple, multi table specified on one or more table of view. So, this is just do your research on hints, and you know, and hopefully you can, you know, you can, you can get a sense of how to use them. But <coughs> yeah, it, it will take some time. Uh, but I wish you the best luck if you were to go that route. Uh, okay, so in terms of this, what you know, okay, just how to how to uh, store the outlines time with execution plan or explain plan. You might be you might be asking yourself. So basically, what a store outline is basically uh, it's it's taking an explain plan and storing it into memory. So for example, right, I just looked up my uh, my you know I just looked up the index for the department the department table for the HR user. And if I really like how long, how efficient that state, that that execution plan was, then what I can do is I can I can actually store that into memory, and use it and and, and you know just and rely on that outline, uh, you know when I'm when I'm you know uh, querying for that um for that data set. So basically, and, uh, basically users they have to have the uh, create outline privilege. Uh, what I'll do is I'm actually going to I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how to do it now. Um, in terms of a uh, stored outline, they they get things that it can be exported. You know, um, you know, um, uh, uh, cross uh, cross distance. Um, so how to do it is, let me do this. Uh, so I'm logging the sys. Let me show my you show you the sys. Okay, so I'm gonna grant create. In the outline to HR. Okay, it's been committed, so I'm going to plug in as HR. What I do now is I'm actually going to I'm going to create a um, I'm going to create an outline for uh, the statement that I used earlier. So I'm going to do this: create outline. Uh, I'm going to call this one outline one. Outline is called one. Okay, on select star from select star from H from department where department department underscore ID is greater than equals to one. Uh, I 
always mess this up with the phone. I just, I'm creating my, I'm creating an outline now. Okay, outline has been created. Uh, so you might be wondering, you might be asking yourself, okay, I've created an outline and I've stored my execution plan, but what does that do? So basically, in terms of the, in terms of the outline, right, you know, even though it's created, you cannot use it yet. Why? Because it's not been, you haven't applied it to your, um, you haven't sort of like attached to your, um, to. It's not in the it's not it's in the system, but it's not the local software is not it's not configured to read it yet. So basically, how you want you know to just check if you have if the outline is available, you can issue this, this thing into that name category from user underscore outlines. Basically, you know I have this is the outline that I just created outline underscore one, and it's in the default category again. Uh, another thing that I should that you know um, I'm glad I'm glad you know I just I just um, you know I just I just saw this but uh, an outline is always attached to a category so if you are uh, if you create an outline you do not you do not assign a category to it it's going to be part of the default category uh, so therefore you know so that's why you know typically you see you know you create an outline and you, you would uh, also create a category uh, where that where that outline can be stored. So, uh, what I'll do now is, um, let me do this. You can, um, you can also, you can also create, you can also do this. Let me do, let me do this. Let me drop outline, outline is going. Oh man, so let me connect. Connect. Drop any outline to HR. Connect HR, HR. Drop outline, outline one. Drop outline, outline underscore one. There you go. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recreate the outline and I'm gonna I'll make sure I assign J category now. Create outline out outline underscore one uh for category category uh I'm gonna call it category underscore one on select Um, uh, department where department underscore ID is greater than or equals to one. I don't think we it, so let me query select name category and user underscore outline. So basically, as you guys can see, I have my, I have a uh, outline one and created category one. And then, so when you when you have the outline basically created, you you store your execution plan. And as I, as I told you already, it's not it's not immediately accessible. So what you have to do is you have to do some uh, you have to you know do some reconfiguration, um, you know reset some uh, some a uh, couple of parameters. <coughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna do it for a session. Now I'm gonna issue this. Uh, Comment, uh, statement ish, uh, author session, um, set query underscore rewrite, rewrite underscore enable is equal to true. This is just telling the, uh, this is just, um, telling August software, hey, this is okay, you can, you know, you know, you can, you, you can, you can, you know, look past your, uh, your, uh, the, your original execution plan. Look, look for this outline. I've, 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 um, I've stored an execution plan that I think you know, you know would would be uh, would be better for this query. So you just just bypassing you know, um, the the um, you know the Oracle, the typical um, optimizer you know um, retrieval um, um, retrieval process. Um, so let me do this. This has been altered, and let me do this. And then the other parameter that I'm, that I'll be um, that I'll be um, 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 changing is auto it's gonna be a I'm gonna do the session again our session I'm gonna use it's gonna be the use stored underscore outlines and then I'm just gonna the outline that I'll be using is actually 
outline and this bold outline. So basically what you're doing is you're first you're bypassing the um the optimizer. Uh, the, you know the, the execution plan that that the optimizer would uh, potentially look um, use to uh, retrieve the data, and then you're telling it, hey, you know, since you bypassed this already, this is what you should look for. Look for this outline, and that's just how it, how to use this store outline. Um, uh, thanks a lot for watching, uh, guys, and I hope to see you guys, uh, you know, um, sometime in the future. Thanks a lot.